how to minimize the time that you spend with organic social media. Because if you followed us for some time, you'll know that it is not something that you can predictably drive sales with. It's very much the long game. It's as Joe Rogan described, it's building a mountain with paint. Yeah. You'll know that organic social media, it's stuff that it's unpredictable. It's down to whatever's trending on the algorithm at the, at the time. It's a way to build long-term nurture and credibility, but it's not going to get you clients immediately. So you want to have it running in the background and really minimize the amount of time that you spend having to like be in that system because you want to be working on the, the key levers in your business that are actually going to drive you forward and allow you to become a profitable online fitness coach and be running in two, three years time. So just bear in mind the distinction that we're not saying don't do it, but we're saying it's not going to get you sales today. It's the kind of thing that you need to build. And in a year, two years time, the lead flow is going to get high enough to the point where, and that's the reason we're hammering YouTube at the moment is that it can eventually increase your margins and reduce your need for ad spend so that you can freewheel it. I'll just briefly, before we get into the details, I'll just briefly explain like how this fits into, if, for those of you who've like seen webinars and seen ads before and like, because we've had some questions recently about like you guys criticize organic, but I see your organic stuff all over the place. How does that tally? Like how, that doesn't make any sense. So the idea is simply that you, you still have this single point of entry. So for us on the fitness side, it's a calculator, the fat loss calculator for us on the uh, business side, it's our like main webinar. So someone will come in through that process and a percentage of the, mi the minority, can you, can you hear the lawnmower? No. No? The, amazing, <laughs> amazing. The, this, a small percentage of people will be like, yep, yeah, let's do it. And they'll buy and that will cover the ad spend, more than cover the ad spend. And that's kind of the core business in many ways. But in the background, you're building the 95% of people who don't buy join your email list, go through automations. And the, really, you can you can keep emailing them and email does a lot. But one of the best ways to build trust with those people is say like, hey, here's a video we made or hey, here's a podcast. And suddenly they start to learn a bit more about you and they, they build the thing that is essentially the hardest thing to acquire online, which is just trust, right? You've heard people, a lot of marketers talk about this. So if we can say to someone who's been following us, they, they saw an ad last month they're like, oh, that looks pretty good, but I'm just, I'm, I worked with a coach previously and it was a, a bit rubbish, so I'm just going to wait for a bit. And in that gap, they binge 10 YouTube videos and 20 podcasts. The chances of them buying has just gone up tenfold. So that's where having this bank of organic stuff is, it's such a, it's an asset, basically, it's retargeting. The cool thing about this on the fitness side is that you're building a recurring body of people who are paying. So let's say your goal is 30 clients. You build up that 30 clients with ads. You turn your ads off. 30 clients still paying you, still paying you. Obviously over time they will churn, but because of this sort of snowball you're building in the background of like an email list that people keep following you and people following you on social media and podcasts maybe starts doing well, that then starts feeding back into the recurring members and replacing the churn. So there's like, there's this whole model and that's how it fits in. So it's, whoops, wow. It's not just this totally isolated strategy where we're saying don't do organic but we do organic it's part of one strategy however when you do do organic there's a there's a way to go about it to make sure you're not just spending all your time on tiktok yes not nicely put so so that's the the kind of what where this fits in in the wider context mm -hmm. and the first thing to bear in mind is all of these platforms are designed to be addictive and yep. they're not just designed to be addictive for the user, they're designed to be addictive for the creator as well. Because every time you get those likes, every time you go, oh, someone's commented on my thing, it's, it's like, oh, that's um, something I made and people like it. So you've got to be careful of this because they, they want creators just as much as they want consumers. Yeah. So what you want to do is separate out the act of creating content as much as possible from the posting. So the number one thing to do is get a scheduling app. It's essential. You cannot be dipping into Instagram three times a day to post something manually. I'll cover specifics of that in a second, but the other key principles are know the difference between feed-based and search-based content. Pick the medium of content that matches your temperament. Have a testing framework, which I'll cover. Pick themed weeks depending on what your core value offering is and use that 
to as the hinge point for all the other bits of micro content that you generate. Bulk post as much as you can. Repurpose the shit out of every bit of content you make. I'll talk about why. <laughs> and then you need some way to attribute sales. You need a sales attribution process so that you know where sales are coming from so that you're not wasting your time. Okay, so with with that in mind, the first thing is get a scheduler. So if you've been following our podcast for a while, you know that we used to use Social B. Um, sadly, they've just not kept up with recent updates and the UI has just become a bit more buggy over time. So we've switched to Publer. Publer is actually free and we can give you a, a link that will allow you the, the free access. We'll put it in the in the description to this um, as well as discount for the, the upgrades, but you might actually be able to get away with the, the free version. It's the best one I've ever come across. It's so smooth. It's multi-platform. It includes even like weird and wonderful social media platforms that you wouldn't have wouldn't have considered. And you can customize things for each one. So get that, bang it all in there. It creates a schedule for you. It'll post out at times that are the highest engagement. So you never have to worry about just being on the platform. The next thing is search-based and feed-based. You were about to say something. I was just going to... I'm just going to play dumb and say like, but what do I, what do I post you stuff? Uh, How do I think of stuff to post? I, good question. So we don't know. So, do we? we don't know. We're, <laughs> we're, we're just trying to think about pants. We are. So search based and feed based. I would recommend having one of each, um, or if you, if you're going to pick one search based, the problem with search based is it's much slower to gain traction and the area under the curve is the same or larger, but it's that it it takes time to build. Mm. Feed based, you get that acute burst of traffic, of, of reach, particularly with something like TikTok, where even if you're a small account, you can post and you have just as much chance of virality as a large account. But what happens is that's like a, a sharp peak and then it drops off and then you go into nothingness again. And that's particularly prevalent with Instagram and Twitter, where the half-life of a post is maybe a few hours, a day, two days at most. So just to contrast that, so the fitness podcast, which we don't upload to it that much at this point, because there's there's hundreds of episodes, but like yesterday, 57 downloads, 34, 46, 51, 65, like every day there are like engaged, active people listening to content we produced years ago. So it takes a long time to generate that momentum. But once you've got that momentum, it's just traffic on tap constantly. Oh yeah, like we haven't touched the fitness podcast in several months, Yeah, maybe years now. So- Whereas TikTok's um, single hit, gone. Exactly. So it depends what you're looking for. And you can all, and, and remember all, all traffic is rented from the platform. So the goal is do what you can, play the game of the platform to get the eyes on that content and get them onto your email list, get them off that platform. Cause otherwise you, you'll be like, oh, the algorithm's changed. We're screwed. Like, well, you should have done something with that traffic. Yeah. So then we've got the medium and that is really depending on what is your temperament. Do you like talking to the camera? If so, brilliant, pick YouTube. If you prefer writing and you're a, you're a good writer, go with Twitter and blogging. Twitter is short form blogging, so it's micro blogging basically. And you can write threads and then they become longer form posts. And so it quite naturally weaves into written content. Writing is always the, the core of, of any content creation because that's at its, at its core is coming, getting ideas into words, isn't it? So <laughs> um, then if you're very visual, and you're, you're photogenic, um, like me and Johnny, very, <laughs> very, very photogenic. We're, we're great with our, with our ass selfies and stuff. Then Instagram, you know, if, if you're, if you're good at getting shots of you, if you're training or, or training clients, obviously like lean into that. So just go with what makes sense. There isn't a best format of content. It just depends on what makes the most sense to you. Don't try and just copy someone else's format because I mean, we've all seen someone on the timeline who's trying to do James Smith, mm. but they're not James Smith. And it's just like, well, it's a bit cringy. 
it's worth remembering as well, like if you're following this insofar as where it fits into the model as a whole that we teach, that the pressure's kind of taken away from doing things for the sake of virality. So a lot of the patterns that you, we see emerge on social media, like the pointing to words and reels and like people, ba like basically, I was looking at an account earlier and say who it is, quite well-known person in the fitness industry. He's basically just producing comedy. It's just, it's just comedy sketches and videos. But the thing that the link in his bio is to an app, the Fat Loss app. So, and it's not James Smith for people wondering. So like that, look how sort of juxtaposed that is. And the only reason that he's doing the comedy is to just get traffic, just to try and get attention because we're finding the people somewhere else. And then they're coming to Instagram or TikTok or whatever the platform is to learn more about you. The content can be just valuable for the sake of it because the, the kind of the the eyeballs to it are going to take care of itself it, if it does well as a side effect great but if you just produce comedy sketches on your instagram to try and grow your following that's not necessarily going to convert into customers and that's basically the problem that everyone has is this sort of put things two things pulling in opposite directions like they want their business to grow but the stuff they're doing is like gaining followers for the sake of it and they don't really help one another just figure out what it is that you want if you want to be famous if you want to be a a comedian with a big following or whatever then probably that's the way to go but this podcast not called how to grow your your comedy business so we, we it's not something we we know much about it's also like a there's a lot of luck involved in being famous i think like if you reverse engineer the the people in fitness who are famous or who have like are on tv and have book the book deals and that sort of thing there'll be other pts who do exactly the same as them in terms of process it's just they, there was a lot of right place, right time, either with the patterns in the industry or the algorithm or somebody shared one of the bits of content and, and now they're in a position where, you know, obviously it's a great for them, but you can't really try to replicate, I'm going to try and get famous and hope that my PT business runs as a result. So we're trying to teach people stuff that's re replicable. Getting famous isn't replicable. Otherwise it wouldn't be, a, it wouldn't be famous. It wouldn't be yeah. fame. It would be normal. 100%. So... Then in terms of the, the content to post, use the mini versions of whatever the content is as micro tests. So that's the testing framework. So if it's <clears throat> short clips of a video or short, short clips of um, writing, so tweets, use them as the atomic things to just put out ideas, put out ways of phrasing things and see what gets the best response. The stuff that does, that's what you redo multiple times and you turn into the longer form content so you're almost putting out lots of little hooks and seeing seeing what works best gary v talks about the best content creators are the ones who can say the same thing eighty thousand different ways it's about finding a message that really resonates and just hammering it and you will feel senile you'll feel like you're you're just like oh, saying the same thing but remember not everyone is watching all of your content <laughs> If you're lucky, if you've got 10,000 followers, you, you'd be lucky to get 700 people that see a post that you do. So never worry about being overly repetitious. There's, there was some advice that um, Russell Brunson used to give, which was like, you will get sick of your message like long before it starts to become even mildly repetitive for anybody else. So like, if anything, if you aren't sick of saying the same thing, chances are it's a bit too diluted and diffuse what you are saying because people see your content in amongst the feed of lots of other stuff and you want what you are saying to be completely clear and transparent like, and specific so like that's that coach's message that's what they're promoting and that starts to be associated with you because i see it all the time you feel like you're saying the same thing every day but it's kind of part of the problem of the internet it's how big it is that is it so johnny always tolerates tolerates me saying the same thing and, and vice versa and we, we pretend that we've heard it for the Ooh. first time but oh, wow, what a good point. Yeah. that's all part of the game so the the next thing is as well is to look at your core value offering and this is why it's really important it's why it's the first thing that we do in our business program is to identify your niche who it is that you help and how you help them and where they're going from from current situation to desired situation so you just got really got to be really clear on that because all of your content and all your ideas and all your modules and everything paid and free comes from that core sentence of I help A to achieve B via C because you've got all the objections, you've got all the goals, the aspirations, the problems, 
that come from that. So that's what creates the themes for each week's content. So you've got the main topic and you've got all the problems associated with it, all the reasons that someone thinks that they can't get the results that you're promising, all the benefits of getting to that solution, all of your personal experiences in getting there, showing that you've been there before, you've gained 20 pounds of muscle while working a busy job and having kids and and you had these things that you encountered and here's how you overcame it and just basic credibility stuff to show that you can you can get the result for someone and um, that you're not some kind of genetic freak or, or whatever. And Dan Ko has an amazing framework on this. He's a writer on, on Twitter who's got some very good thoughts on, on content overall. And he says that content has three kind of flavors. It can be authority content, it can be authentic authenticity content, or it can be growth content. So growth, viral stuff, not necessarily going to convert sales. Authority content might convert sales, but doesn't have the, the, the viral growth potential. And authenticity content is kind of vlog stuff, like here's a day in the life or whatever. So what he's saying is that if you can take those three flavors and combine them, so if you've got authority and growth, that's going to generate a lot of sales. If you have authority and authenticity, that's going to generate loyalty. If you have growth and authenticity, that's going to generate engagement. But what you really want is all three of those together, because then you've got real leverage. And that's quite hard to produce that in one piece of content. So that's why you need to kind of rotate between authority, growth and authenticity. And then you end up producing powerful sales content that you can rinse and repeat. So fantastic. Fantastic. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of how to structure your content, how to do the week to week work. Um, I would post in bulk as well. So you can record over time, generate loads of clips, generate loads of bits of writing, whatever it is, use things that are in your existing second brain. If you've been build building one, your existing notes, your interactions with clients, all that stuff to create the foundations for content. You should never be running out of ideas for it. And we've got a couple of modules in our program about how to generate a conveyor belt of content ideas as well. Like we, we have the opposite now. We've, we've got too many ideas and the, the goal is to triage and pick the best ones. And that's the position they should be in. With, with all of these things. So the same applies to email marketing, same, really anything that you're doing that is communicating with your market, like your followers, whether that's email subscribers, Twitter followers, YouTube subscribers, whatever you want to try and engineer the scenario where it is working, it is functioning when you are not online. So there's something that is always happening that is not linked to, we're always trying to break that relationship between I am doing an hour of work to produce one unit of output because that will break eventually. So Yusuf is, I remember, I remember you scheduling like, I can't remember how many, how many 400. <laughs> yeah, in a single go. So like people see Yusuf's Twitter and go like, bloody hell, this guy was just busy on Twitter all day. Actually, not at all. Yeah. So actually I'll, I'll put the link in the description for this episode, but we use a tool called Hype Fury for Twitter. So you can use Publa, but Hype Fury is specific to Twitter. And so it's a bit better for our purposes. Um, but that's because we've got the budget to spend on both, but you can, you can go with one or the other. <clears throat> and currently there's 1200 tweets scheduled in there. So that's multiple Crazy. tweets a day for a year don't need to touch it and if you would imagine if you're doing that manually if someone said right you've got to post 1200 tweets this year it's and you were like frantically writing on your phone trying to think of things to write and always being distracted on the feed and all that stuff so it, it would be a nightmare so even for that alone it's a massive time saving and therefore money saving and to give you an idea of like how something like this propagates so we get a question from a client right or a lead who's about to buy that comes in we write an email about it the email goes to the list the email makes a sale Ooh, it's made a sale mm -hmm. the email then, <laughs> the email then becomes a tweet thread the tweet thread becomes and that then becomes a podcast and that becomes a youtube video and then that youtube video gets chopped up and put onto tiktok and put onto instagram and and, and suddenly you have this sheen that is resonating back saying back to the market what it said to us right and it's all automated 
But doesn't that sound cool? Wouldn't it be great if you could work with someone to help you build that? If only there was someone you could speak to. Oh, if only someone, had, had, someone had maybe been through all the, the problems themselves. And where would we find them? Figured it out. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so yeah, that leads very nicely onto the idea of repurpose the shit out of it. Any piece of long form content, keep repurposing it, turn it into different formats, take the direct <clears throat> clips and chop it down. So Gary V was kind of the pioneer of this stuff, or at least the popularizer of it. And he's got an old slideshow talking about this where you have pillar content like this, like this podcast, where we sit down, we've got rough notes and we record. Then we chop that into five minute clips, put it onto YouTube, chop it into one minute clips, put it on Instagram and TikTok and so on. And each person, like that's a separate bit of content in itself. Like so the guy who sees this on TikTok hasn't watched the full podcast. They haven't seen the full YouTube video. So it's not, they're not going to be like, oh, bloody hell, it's that season two, episode 27 again. They're in. <laughs> <laughs> they might have never heard from us. I mean, if they do think that and they haven't bought propane business yet, like, what are they doing? Then fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it, I think it's a, it becomes a machine, right? Like, I think it's very, very separate to what so many people are doing, which is just like headless chicken running around, like thinking of something to post today, spending hours on Canva. Like, this is a, this is a production line that stems from customers, consumers, market asking us questions and producing the content for us. And then a big spider's web that just takes care of the rest of it. And that's a very different world to what I think a lot of people think of when they think organic content. And what, very different to what we were doing eight years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It was just frantic. Like, wake up, right, think of a bit of content. Okay, right, do that on Instagram. Yeah. All right, think of a content for Twitter. Think of something. So, <laughs> yeah. final piece, which maybe is for another day, because I feel like it's a, I it's it a big one. Uh, sales I think we... attribution. Oh. <laughs> yeah that is a big one that is a big one and you know what you are going to have to wait to hear about that mm. but what if you could know exactly which platform generated you sales so you could direct your effort onto the things that are working and stop doing the things that aren't if only there was an answer if you could look at all the different platforms and have a, a numerical value attached to them in pounds pound sterling or pound us dollars sterling. even but mainly pound sterling <laughs> speak to you next week for sales attribution what an exciting prospect i can't wait yeah <laughs> i can't wait i won't be able to sleep till then <laughs>